let's uh let's get this the 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 nitty gritty out of the way um you you're kind of had a little bit of news uh the last couple weeks so i wanted you to kind of i know people could go to your your uh instagram or your newly founded tiktok page and discuss uh and see kind of what happened to you but i'd like to hear uh uh, for you just to kind of retell the, the tale for, for people who may not be familiar with you so we can kind of get this message out there. Yeah, totally. I mean, my I'm, I'm a film content creator. I guess my niche is more so indie movies, uh, older movies, obscure movies, film history, let's call it. Um, and I've had my account for two years, two years of consistent posting on TikTok, I should say, specifically. Um, no warnings, no bans. And I woke up on, I think it was January 25th with just my account completely wiped, just gone. No, no, no reason, no explanation, no strikes, um, which is crazy because you're supposed to get, I believe, three strikes from the app until they boot you for good. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just woke up to a, a million DMs on Instagram being like, what happened to your account? And I had no idea. I log on to TikTok, I see it's a IP problem. So intellectual property violation, um, which is interesting because I work in my day to day as a film journalist. So we're very aware, we're made aware of, you know, what images you can use, what images you can't use in your articles. Um, the music that I use comes from with an app. Um, and then I did some research as well uh, on TikTok's IP policy page uh, and noticed that even the um, if, if we're quoting something, say, in for a review or for a analysis, that's all allowed uh, within TikTok's policy. So to this day, I have no idea what I did wrong. I mean, you know, I'm in a very similar realm as you are um, commenting, you know, quoting, recommending, criticizing all that stuff. So uh, I think for people like me, it was actually pretty surprising to see. That's actually how I ended up discovering you was because of your band. Uh, a lot of I, we follow some of the similar people. They 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 put that information out there, and I looked into it and was pretty appalled by, I guess, just the lack of I don't want to say consideration, but the lack of just humanity. And I don't mean that in like the figurative term. It's just it seems like it was almost it's a it. bot that that had banned you. You haven't been able to get in contact with a human being, and it's just it's kind of it's it's worrisome for a lot of people in the community, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, talk a little bit about what's happened since then Absolutely. and then, um, kind of what you're establishing now and, and how you're going to be moving forward. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also important to mention that what you just said, the fact that I haven't been able to get through a single human, I sent, you know, a hundred ticket requests in app. I sent emails that were then looked by bots that said your account is permanently banned there's no way of getting it back um i've tweeted i've had creators that are that have big followings reach out to their reps and that that was actually the funniest thing that those creators got back to me and they said yeah they can see the ban but they can't see why so how, how is that how is that possible you know so I mean, I'm convinced that it maybe was a bot, something like that. I know there's another guy. Gosh, I can't remember his handle right now. I'm so sorry. Um, but he had, I think, 140K followers. And he, same thing happened to him. Just one it's day. Just completely woke up, nuked his channel, gone. huh? Totally. So, I mean, what am I going to do now? I guess start from scratch. I'm debating. I'm going to give it maybe a couple weeks, maybe seek out legal action. I don't know yet um, because obviously TikTok is currently having that problem with universal music. So, I mean, I'm sure they're swamped. Um, so that's my my plan. I, I started a new page. Um, I've been growing that for the past week. I'm lucky that I have all of my videos still on Instagram because I used to repost all the time. So now I'm just bringing them back over. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think one of the most worrisome parts for, for just me personally is just the, uh, I'd be like, so what's, what's the moral of the story here? What lessons have we learned from this? And, uh, there doesn't seem to be any. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's, that's the most worrying part of it. I'm trying to get a meeting with somebody from TikTok in Canada where I'm based. Um, and my goal for that meeting isn't even at this point to get my, I mean, obviously to get my account back, but if that can't happen, just tell me, tell me what it was. Yeah. Um, because we should all know, not just me at the end of the day, 
some people use social media for, you know, for fun, but I'm sure like you, like me, we use it for our businesses, right? So to have two years of your business, the way I see it, and this is what I keep telling people, it's like you have a physical business and someone just showed up and burned it to the ground. That, that's, yeah. that's it, right? So, I mean, I just want to know why this happened at this point. Yeah, I mean, all the all the time, um, you know, a lot of people that that watch our stuff are just like, oh, you know, that was that was a cool little video, but they don't understand the behind the scenes aspect yeah. of it. One, watching these movies and then writing about these movies and going for over sure. it and deleting it, and you know, it's just it's a it's it takes a long time for something to look so simple, I guess you could say. So Absolutely. I'm sure you spent uh, like you've had two years two years with this account, but I mean, just. The day to day, the amount of time you put in is probably, I mean, you probably can't even really <laughs> count how <laughs> how much time you you spent on it. So that's, I mean, that was the most disheartening thing for me to see because I looked at your channel and I was like, I mean, I follow a lot of different movie creators and stuff, and some I'm like, I'm like, hers is like the least offensive account I can, <laughs> uh, comparatively speaking. You know, you don't you don't get on there and and shit on a lot a lot of things. You basically just what I've enjoyed about your content is it's a lot of obscure stuff. You, you know, you, uh, I was telling one of my, one of my other film buddies, I was like, it's like, she can pull a film and be like, Oh, this awesome director from Kazakhstan. I just love all these things. And then you'll compare it to like a more mainstream movie that, uh, us in the West are familiar with. And I really like just how you combine all that. So a anyway, that that being said, it's just like it's, it's disheartening. It like breaks my heart for you, but you seem to be it's handling it with grace. So that uh, you know, props to you on that. It's it's all you can do. I mean, I guess now is actually a good time to bring that up. I'm I'm launching a podcast in April, so this couldn't have happened at the worst time, I guess, when you want eyeballs on a on a new project. Um, and I'm at the point now where handling it with grace sure because what what's the other alternative you know you you anything is better than zero eyeballs on a new project so you just gotta pick it up and try again right with with that being said so uh, you you have you have things in the works do you think this ban has brought more attention to you though do you think it's it's there's maybe like a a, a blessing from this curse in a way Yes. So that's that's actually a really good question because it's been when did it, when did I say it happened on the 25th? So it's been two weeks. It's just been a roller coaster of emotions where, you know, you grieve for something that you've lost. But then at the same time, as you said, it's put a lot of eyeballs on my account. And with this new one now, sure, it's obviously significantly smaller, but the follows that I did get, I've been suddenly put on the radar of other people in the community, other companies um, actual businesses too. So yeah, in a way it's blessing and a curse, let's say, strangely enough. Yeah. Yeah. So with that being said, where can, where can, um, people go find you and help support you and, and all that? Thank you. So my new TikTok is Marta, M-A-R-T-A dot dot McFly. Uh, and then my Instagram is just my original handle, which is Marta dot McFly. Okay. And I mean, that's, that also caught my attention is just your play on words there. That was, uh, yeah. uh, that was great. So, <laughs> because Back to the Future is like one of my all time. Love. Same. Yeah. Right. Like who, I, I don't think I've ever met a person that doesn't like the first Back to the Future. You know, the sequels, they have their, their, they're divisive, but the, yeah. the first one is just the like the one. perfect movie, you know? It's the perfect script. That's what I tell everybody. Every single gag in that movie, every single throwaway line is related to something else. It's genuinely yeah. such an intelligent script. It really is. It really, especially for <laughs> such a such a big movie that just has such cultural influence. I mean, I have a I have I have a daughter, and then I have two stepkids, and every single one of them is like, "Let's walk watch Back to the Future when we have family movie night." They just they love that movie. Of course. And then my uh, my step my stepson's all about Indiana Jones right now, which I'm just like, oh, nice. he's still my heart. Um, that but, was uh, that was my <laughs> obsession as a kid. Yeah, me too. Well. You and me both. Yes. You and me both. Yes. So that being said, let's talk a little bit uh, about movies. So you said you're a film yeah. journalist. Um, what all does that entail? Do you just kind of go in and do research on older films? Kind of, I don't know. I, I haven't seen a lot of modern stuff on your 
social. So tell us a little bit about what you do. So a lot of different stuff. I mean, I do review modern stuff if it's within my niche. Like before my account got banned, I reviewed uh, the new Yorgos Lanthimos movie. Um, Next week, I'm reviewing the new Vim Vendors movie. So there is new stuff sprinkled in, but only if it's within, I guess, that qualification of what what I like to do. Um, That niche. with my work. Yeah. That niche. Thank you. Yeah. Um, With my work. So I'm a staff writer over at Slosh Film. Um, and there I'll be writing about, I guess, whatever pitches I come up with, they come up with, um, could be anything. I don't, I can, I'm trying to think of an example right now. I'm drawing a blank. Like it could be behind the scenes stories. It could be a roundup of, I did my favorite Japanese action movies, for example, and it's an entire list of those and chatting about those. Um, okay. and then my, um, my freelance stuff as well is just the pitches that I come up with. So I've written for Little White Lies, for example. I once chatted about this like forgotten video nasty from the 70s or another time I decided to compare Jane Mansfield to reality TV stars of today and how she set the standard for that. So it's really just pop culture and film history and whatever I feel like coming up with, I suppose. That's very cool. So what's uh, what's what's your background? Have you always just been... Uh a film nerd or uh, has it was it something that was kind of thrust upon you and you fell in love with it i i have always been a film nerd i guess since i was in early high school it was uh tarantino actually that got me into older stuff because of all his homages right um he may not be my favorite filmmaker now but back in the day i remember watching pulp fiction um and my parents came in the room and they're like oh this dancing scene did you know that that's from fellini's Eight and a Half and La Dolce Vida, uh, or no, not La Dolce Vida, Eight and a Half, sorry, and Bond Apart uh, by Godard, um, those two movies. And I just looked at them like, who's Godard? Who's Fellini? Uh, I don't know these people. Um, and the next thing you know, I just started this deep dive of looking into all the movies that Tarantino loved. Um, and yeah, that then I realized, you know, film history and all these old movies at this point now where we are in the world, it's like film preservation, like oral film preservation to talk about it. Um, And that's kind of my goal is just keeping these movies alive. It's part of the reason why I don't do negative reviews on my channels, because I just want to champion what I love and introduce other people. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I, I fall, I fall victim to that at times where it's just like, you know, modern movies, I have a love hate relationship with them. There, some of them you're just like, man, you could just tell that this is just studio interference, one hundred percent of the uh, of it. And there's just it just doesn't it just feels creatively bankrupt. So it's like on that one hand, you look at something and it's like, oh, it was just so hard to enjoy that movie. But I've been in this industry, I've worked on movies, I know the struggle and how difficult it is to make. You know, so it's like, it's just that love-hate relationship. So I've been trying to go back and kind of do what you do is focus more on older things that I really like and recommend. Yeah, it was not necessarily as obscure films as you do, <laughs> but like movies that people might have missed or they might have heard something about, or they maybe even saw it and didn't like it. And I could be like, hey, go back and watch this and watch watch it with this in mind. Um because I recently did that with the movie The Gray and I put it on YouTube and like I got so much feedback on it because I I rewatched it recently. I watched it at when you know when it first came out and didn't <laughs> think much of it and then I watched it again recently and it was just like a whole different experience. It was kind of one of those things where the movie just sucks you in and you're like, "Holy crap, I did not yep. pick up on this at all." And that's the power that I love in film. And I see that a lot in what you do. Like you'll bring up an obscure film that you you know maybe you'd seen in school or something and then you'll talk about it and just be like this is what i love about you know it's just i can see your passion alive and that's that to me is one of the most endearing things about uh uh what you do thank you i mean that's that's ultimately the goal i find with so many of those older movies people are just put off by them because they just don't want to take the time to understand them right so it's taking something highbrow and making it i don't want to say lowbrow but more more accessible to everybody uh and just talking about it in a way that everyone can hopefully get something out of it yeah no i think uh your apt comparisons are great uh you released one the other day where you're like if you like goodfellas you know you might oh, like yeah. this film and i was like see that's that that like you said taking highbrow and making it lowbrow 
So, uh, so you write for Slash Film. That's that's awesome. Yep. Are you, uh, what, where can people find your articles and stuff like that on the website? Do you have a particular column or anything? Uh, I'm just under the author page. Uh, the best thing to do to find all my written work would be just my website, which is um, martadjo.com. We just mentioned modern films. Is there stuff that like you look forward to uh, do you look forward to seeing new movies or do you look forward to just kind of like going back and watching older stuff oh my gosh i new new movies definitely as well i'm just i guess i'm just selective okay um, that's totally I'll, fair yeah I'll, I'll i'll watch something new if i kind of have a feeling i'm gonna like it if i know i'm not gonna like it it's like for example last year i didn't go watch the cheetos movie because why would i i, I know i'm not gonna like that right don't know why I just use that as an example, um, but that's just one example. Um, but if it's something that I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy, I'll go watch it. I just saw, like I said, four things a few weeks ago. Um, What'd you think new, of that? The, I loved it. It oh was my great, gosh. wasn't it? It was. I'm I'm the biggest Yorgos Lanthimos fan. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. Have you seen his older stuff? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I, love, I love The Lobster. That one's still my favorite. I think um, when I first saw The Lobster, I was like, what? I just, uh, I was, it was a different time. Like my daughter was really young and I wasn't getting much sleep and I watched it and I was like, I don't know about that one. And then I recently, before poor things came out, I had a, I had a screener to go see it and I was like, you know, let me go back and watch this again. I watched it again. And I was like, wait a second, that movie's amazing. So, you know, yep. just, uh, it's one of those yep. things. <laughs> yeah. Poor things. I mean, poor things I think is, it sounds weird to say, but it may be his most accessible movie next to yeah, the Yeah. It kind of had like maybe? the Tim Burton vibe going with it. Totally. With the set design. Absolutely. Um, there's a really good Mads Mikkelsen movie being released, or maybe it's out in the States already. It's called The Promised Land. I saw that. I heard it's superb. I saw that at uh, VIF, the Vancouver International Film Festival back in October, and it blew me away. It's definitely be on the lookout. I, I, I've heard nothing but good things. And I, I mean, who doesn't like Mads Mikkelsen? He's like that. Exactly. He's that actor that's in everything. A lot of people the, might not be familiar with his name, but they're like, oh, yeah, that guy. I like that guy. That guy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he was great um, in Hannibal, too, remember? Oh, man. Uh, so I... I I'm sure you've seen like I kind of make lists of underrated things and that's going to be mm-hmm. definitely one of the underrated shows because the show I thought was almost as good if not better than the movies you know I agree like, just surprisingly so like I, I I remember I didn't watch it when it first came out and then people kept recommending it recommended and like good. people that I hold in high regard and then I eventually watched it and said wow this show is awesome and then they cut it off but I know that there's talks of maybe picking it back up I don't know we'll see I don't know that. yeah the the crazy thing about that show because I watched it when it was on air is the fact that um it was on cable like something that grim was on cable so I thought that was really interesting yeah and, and in the states that was actually on just like prime tv I think it was on NBC yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same yeah. here. Oh, I did have a question though. So, <laughs> and forgive my ignorance in this. I, I'm, I was just curious. Is, is TikTok different in Canada than it is in the United States? I know you guys have a little bit more policing going with online things over there. So I wasn't sure yeah. if that has any sort of <laughs> if that played any factor into it. I'm gonna try to be as as politically correct as possible and as kind as possible because I'm trying to get my account back. But ah. Uh, Yes, it is. It is a bit different. We also don't have the um, what is it? The creativity fund or what do you guys yeah. call it? The mm-hmm. yeah, um, that was that was my biggest gripe for the longest time because they got it in the UK. They got it. They have it there. Obviously, um, we don't. We don't have that. So there's yeah. there's really no way to make money unless you're like in the big big leagues um at least from the the app itself directly i've been talking to a few people doing these and i ta- I was talking to one guy who's a uh, movie reviewer in boston and he has to like really really work to get in to see movies out there and he's like the reason why is because they have such big uh you know that like the really big newspapers and magazines and stuff like that. So like, if you don't have a subscriber or follower account of over a hundred thousand, they have, they want nothing to do with you. Yep. I was like, that's, that's insane. It's not like that over here, over here. Yeah. They're like, Oh, you have an online thing where you review movies. Here you go. So, here you go. uh, yeah. So I mean, all the collaborations and any sort of income I made off of TikTok was always through like a third party, like a, you know, 
production company, another app, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but but never directly from TikTok. So thanks, wow. guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I I mean, obviously, I wanted to talk and 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 spread the message and you know get people Thank following you because I think one you have an excellent account. You seem like a very nice person. Um, uh, from what limited re- uh, interactions we've had, um, Thank and you, you know, hopefully this could spread around and and we, we get some. You get something from TikTok. I mean, that's what I'd like to see is just it's like you get fun. something, just something, just just, just, a, a just human an interaction. Yeah, yeah, just an just, answer. Just one. <laughs> Just to know that it's not all, you know, bots that work there. Because as far as I'm concerned right now, the company. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it happened by mistake or if it was just a a rogue employee or if it, I mean, if it was bots, that's the thing that where you're just like, oh, geez, with AI on the horizon. I mean, what are they yep. going to do? Just like, yeah. Anyway, it's that's a topic funny, for a different day. Oh, I know. The funny thing is um, 24 hours before the ban happened. I think that was my first time on the app that I responded to a troll comment. Um, and I said, it was, it wasn't even that bad. I think I just said, calm down. And then I wake up in the morning and my account is gone. So I'm like, did my one calm down just ruin everything for me? Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, the, the trolling online is interesting. I try not to interact with it too much because I'm I'm like, yeah, because I'm like, if it was real and you're like that upset about something, but I'm always like, it's probably just not even a person. It's probably just a bot, you know? (laughs) So it's like, it's I don't want to go argue with someone it. that's not, not there. Yeah. I've decided with my new account now, it was just a decision that I made. I mean, I've only had it for a week, but I have now started, if it's, if it's a troll comment without any rhyme or reason or anything intelligent to say, I just delete it. Um, before I used to keep it up for, you know, the algorithm and for more views, yada, yada. But at this point I'm like, you know what? My mental health comes first. And yeah. And you don't want to put yourself in that position to where something like this could happen again. Cause if that was the case, which still is ridiculous, if it was, you know, because oh, of y- yeah, we should, we should bring that up quickly. Um, in case other creators want to know. Yeah. Yes, yeah, please. I, I completely forgot. Thank you actually for reminding me. Um, so within the policies, I don't know if you if people want to find it, it's either under the IP policy or the community guidelines for TikTok, but it states that we as creators are responsible for the comments that we receive. So by that, if someone say, you know, doesn't feel like using the Criterion channel or movie to watch a movie legally, and if they leave you a link with like a torrent site or I don't know, one of those illegal websites, doesn't matter, um, you can get dinged for that. So when I used to get comments like that, I would just sometimes leave them, sometimes delete them. I'd never interact with them, but they lived on my page, right? Um, And yeah, I found out through the policy that we're responsible for that. So if you see that, just swipe it away. That's good to know. I mean, actually, because, you know, uh, I just started my TikTok a few months back and it's been it's been growing pretty steady. Um, it's been growing pretty steady, but like I, if I start to see comments like that, I'm just going to, I'm going to do the same as you. I'm just going to delete it right away. So, I mean, that was actually, that was pretty good information to, to learn. I mean, that may not even be why uh, what happened to you happened, but it's, you know, at the same time, if they're putting something up there, that's illegal. It's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm getting rid of this. Yeah, it's, it just sucks that, I mean, we're responsible for that. Or shouldn't it be the person who left it, you know? Especially if you're a huge account, like you can't keep track of all the comments. Exactly. There's no yeah. way. I mean, unless you like hide the key or ban the keyword link, but then nobody can see the word link. So I don't know. I really don't know. Off that topic, um, I, I, I love to ask people this because I get asked this question all the time and I'm always just like, I have a, I have a short answer but it changes a lot but uh, you know you're probably to your friends you're probably the movie gal right so like what are some of your yeah. favorite movies um okay well my all is this favorite... a, is this a tough question for you oh like it's it is for awful. me it's i know it's it is right i i hate it <laughs> but but i'll answer um for me it's like if if you're asking me my favorite movies i would in an ideal world give you 20 but I mean, we don't have time for that. So uh, let's do, I don't know. I mean, what's in my letterbox top four right now? That's that's a good indication. Uh-huh. Yeah, letterbox. Uh, I, I, I talked to a guy the other day who was like, I try to think in top fours now, thanks to letterbox. <laughs> it's true, though. Um, 
my all-time favorite movie i just rewatched it last night because i'm going on a podcast after this um to talk about it in the mood for love by wong kar uh, have you seen that one yep yep yeah that one i absolutely adore um i'm a huge tarkovsky nut i think that tarkovsky is one of those filmmakers that can initially turn you off off of his work so much because it's so heavy i guess um but once you rewatch his stuff once you you know maybe take the time to look at some interviews with him see what he was trying to express and explain um his films aren't so scary they're just films that you feel emotionally versus trying to analyze so my favorite out of those with tarkovsky i mean back, back when i was in film school with tarkovsky i remember that was when i really learned the art of nuance in film. Yes. I was watching yes. Tarkovsky. Everything, everything's very nuanced and metaphoric and it's it? it's a lot deeper than it looks on the surface. So that's he, that's actually pretty interesting to hear that. Yeah, he said so himself over and over and over again that his movies he wanted the audience to feel and not analyze. And that's why there's that focus on the music as well. Like I have an entire book on analyzing just the sounds in his movies, the sound design um why something was scored a certain way everything has a reason right um so nostalgia is my favorite by tarkovsky um what else i'm a huge kiristami fan um abbas kiristami he was an iranian filmmaker um and his stuff is very slow uh looks at human compassion he's one of those comforting directors that i like turning to and Things are going so well. So, for example, the past two weeks, I've been watching a lot of Abbas Um, The Wind Will Carry Us is my personal favorite. It's just a beautiful movie. Um, and I would say the last one in my top four is currently Wings of Desire by Vim Vendors. I, I adore Vendors so much. Yeah, didn't you just put uh, something up about Wings of Desire? Uh, I put up, I just changed my top four back to include wings of desire but i just reviewed his brand new movie that's out next week um perfect days um which was like a dedication and a tribute to ozu the whole movie was shot in japan and in, in japanese okay have you ever been to japan no it's on my bucket list me too me too yeah. i've always wanted to go well i've like low-key i've always had a uh, giant infatuation with like samurai and the the culture Same. Uh, uh, yeah i've always loved it and so I know that uh, Hulu is releasing the Shogun series, which is my is all-time it? favorite book. So I'm excited to see what they do with that, but I'm just hoping yeah. they don't <laughs> they don't screw that up. Um, so yeah. do you have any mainstream movies that are like a go-to movie or anything like that for you? Oh my gosh, great question. Uh, mainstream movies that are go-to. Uh, Tarantino stuff, as I mentioned earlier. Um, do you have a, a favorite? Huge... Oh yeah, um, Pulp Fiction. Okay, that's kind of yeah, it's hard to answer. beat that. Yeah. Oh, but I also really love Jackie Brown. I think Jackie Brown is criminally underrated. Um, and the needle drops in that one, too. I think he, it has like the best needle drops out of any of his movies. Um, what else? I'm a huge American Psycho fan, like it, die hard. Um, trying to think of other go to popular movies and now I'm just drawing a blank. I mean, no, that's all Criterion's behind me. So probably <laughs> not. <laughs> um, yeah, I see yeah, a police let's... story one right there. I I love Police Story. I oh, think me too. That Jackie Chan's physical comedy is timeless and next level. Whenever someone asks me my go-to, I always say the first Lord of the Rings. I mean, I love the whole trilogy, oh, yeah, but, of course. but the first one is just, I don't know, there's something about that one that just yep. I never gets old to me, ever. No. I would also include, uh, totally different, not even in the same realm, uh, Superbad is one of my favorite comedies to this day. <laughs> Yeah, I miss I miss those I miss those comedies. Yeah, you know? we're never going to get them again, I don't I think. I know. <laughs> and it's it's such a shame because when you go back yeah. and watch them now, you're just like, "Oh my gosh, this is so funny." But yeah, just the modern audience could not handle nope that not sort of chance. stuff, you know. No. But uh yeah. Okay, well, I know you got other things to do. You're a very busy gal. Um so I are thank you. you very much for coming on. Uh, mm -hmm. so once again, if you could just uh, tell us who you are and, and where people can find you and how they can support you. Totally. Yeah. So uh, my name is Marta online, Marta.McFly on Instagram, Marta.McFly on TikTok. 
Um, if the, those places also have links to my website too, so people can sure. find that. Sure, I'll put easily. a little graphic up. I'll put a little graphic Thank up you. for where people can find you. Yeah, easy peasy. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm just a, a film journalist and film content creator, and just spreading love of cinema online wherever I can. And you're doing a great job at it, Marta. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being on, and uh, let's do this again me. sometime. I really, I really Please. enjoyed it. I would love that. Thank you again. Absolutely. Have a good one. We'll talk to you, you soon. You too. Bye. Yeah, take care, Marta. Bye-bye.